Is there a looming driver market problem coming down the road for Red Bull? It certainly looks that way and it could have massive repercussions for F1's freshly crowned Constructors' Champions. And it's Sergio Perez who had a nightmare Japanese Grand Prix that even his team boss Christian Horner called a shocker that is a slightly shaky cork in the bottle here. Perez has a firm contract with Red Bull until the end of 2024, but every underperformance and clumsy error like we saw at Suzuka will be testing how firm that deal really is, especially at a time that Red Bull has five drivers and only four seats across its two teams. Back when his current deal was signed, Perez was just about to win the 2022 Monaco Grand Prix and his stock within Red Bull was probably at an all-time high. Since then, we've had Verstappen's camp allege that Perez crashed deliberately in qualifying at Monaco that year, Verstappen's subsequent revenge at the Brazilian Grand Prix, Perez tailing off badly two years in a row as Red Bull has made its car faster, Daniel Ricciardo making a career comeback fueled by a concerted effort to take Perez's seat, and Helmut Marko making a sequence of inappropriate remarks about Perez's lack of focus, which have provoked a severe backlash against the team. Perez has stated his determination to see out his Red Bull contract and sit down at some point next year to discuss an extension. But at the same time, he has also entertained the possibility that his own F1 dream is nearing its end. He wants to win races and world championships, and Red Bull is the only place that offers a realistic chance of realising that ambition. The trouble is, Verstappen is too powerful and too good to let that happen. So Perez is stuck trying to achieve a level of inferiority as a number two driver that's acceptable to Red Bull, but he keeps falling well below the standard Red Bull expects. Yes, Perez is second in the championship, and despite a miserable couple of weekends in Singapore and Japan, he's on course to help deliver Red Bull's first ever 1-2 in the driver's standings. But he's in a car that in Verstappen's hands is a cut above everything else on the grid, yet he's only finished in the top two in six races out of 16, and four of those came in the first five races of the season. There's been a suggestion that Red Bull could use a performance mechanism within Perez's contract to demote him to Alpha Tauri if he finishes too far behind Verstappen in the championship. There's also a counter suggestion that Red Bull cannot do that because Perez's deal is specific to Red Bull Racing and therefore outside the remit of being demoted to Alpha Tauri. Whatever the case, there's no one obviously superior coming onto the market in the short term to replace him, and Red Bull seems minded to see how 2024 plays out. Yuki Tsunoda and Ricardo have both been confirmed at Alpha Tauri for 2024, meaning Red Bull would need to ditch Perez completely with one more year remaining on his contract and then replace him with either Liam Lawson, which seems incredibly unlikely, or someone outside the current stable of Red Bull drivers, which would be a needlessly expensive exercise. Tsunoda brings financial backing from Honda to the tune of several million dollars a year, and his performances are on an upwards trajectory, so his place within the Red Bull family looks like it could continue at least until Honda joins up with Aston Martin for 2026. Ricardo makes sense from a commercial perspective too, and although somewhat damaged goods after his difficult stint at McLaren, he is a proven Grand Prix winner who brings the sort of experience Alpha Tauri needs to become the team Red Bull wants it to be, more competitive in its own right so it's not just a financial burden on the parent company. Plus, once he's recovered from the broken hand he suffered at Zavort, having Ricardo at Alpha Tauri for a full season will allow Red Bull to properly assess whether he's recovered his best form and is ready to replace Perez and become Verstappen's teammate again. Despite the injury layoff, there's a sense Ricardo has some momentum behind him right now. He did a decent enough job in his first two races back in the saddle, but there was nothing exceptional there, and if anything, Tsunoda's underlying pace was stronger. Since then, Alfa Tauri has developed its car well, and that's enabled Ricardo's stand in Liam Lawson to make an instant impression. Maybe once he returns to action, Ricardo will star, but for now, if anyone is coming out of this with an enhanced reputation, it's Sonoda and Lawson. Yet Sonoda appears to be a driver Rebel isn't really considering for its top team, someone it's happy to have while Honda is footing the bill, but not a natural successor to Perez. So would Ricardo be a step forward? He's still got some way to go to prove that. One thing he seems to have understood from his time at McLaren is that overanalyzing his driving and trying too hard to adapt to the car just won't work for him. But that kind of approach can place an artificial ceiling on Ricardo's potential. As Kimi Raikkonen proved during his F1 career, you can only get so far obstinately driving in your own preferred way and asking the team to bend around your whims. All the top drivers in F1 now have shown dedication to understanding and adapting to the finer details of car performance rather than relying on pure feel and intuition. 
Adaptability is regularly touted as a hallmark of Verstappen's recent domination of F1. Red Bull simply makes the car faster and faster, and he goes with it. Perez struggles to do that, and if Ricardo isn't able or willing to either, then it's unlikely he will prove to be a proper upgrade on Perez in 2025. The ultimate future of Perez remains the deciding factor in all of this. In 2025, when many more drivers potentially come onto the market, it seems almost inconceivable that Perez will earn a new Red Bull deal, which means there is some important succession planning for F1's best team to do. And that task actually extends further than simply working out how to replace Perez. Verstappen is contracted to the end of 2028, but he has already gone on record stating his distaste for F1's looming 2026 rule changes and how F1's relentlessly expanding travel demands are increasingly likely to spoil his and his colleagues' work-life balance. If Verstappen decided not to see out the remainder of his contract, then all bets are off. Every single top driver in F1 would want to make themselves potentially available for that seat. Whatever Verstappen decides, Rebel has to consider replacing Perez with a driver that can not only be a more effective teammate to Max, but could also be capable of becoming team leader eventually. Rebel may well retain its competitive advantage through to 2026, as many expect, but in the meantime, Ferrari and Mercedes, and potentially Aston Martin and McLaren too, should all come further into the picture, meaning a stronger support act will be needed if the championship becomes a closer run thing. And if that person isn't Ricardo or Sunoda, or even Lawson, who can feel hard done by if Red Bull can't find a seat for him elsewhere on next year's grid, then Red Bull is going to have to take another dip outside its own pool of drivers. Lando Norris is often touted as the preferred candidate, a friend to Verstappen, admired by Christian Horner and Helmut Marko, and also someone Red Bull has tried to sign more than once previously. The trouble is, Norris is tied to McLaren until the end of 2025. His rookie teammate Oscar Piastri might have become available a year sooner, which would have tied in perfectly with the end of Perez's deal. But McLaren has smartly seen off potential suitors by tying its star rookie down until the end of 2026 at least. Alex Albon is another who potentially becomes available at the right time for Red Bull. His Williams contract expires at the end of 2024 and he has rejuvenated his career to a point where Red Bull would be happy to have him back alongside Verstappen. Albon has also indicated his own readiness to take such a step. Albon probably is Red Bull's cleanest and easiest bet in attempting to replace Perez from outside its existing pool of drivers, but you can bet Williams will be moving mountains to try to get its lead driver, and the guy team boss James Vowles wants to build the team's future around to sign an extension. In theory, both Carlos Sainz and Charles Leclerc are also available for 2025, but most likely they are going to extend their respective stints at Ferrari. Leclerc has made it clear he wants to stay, and this partnership remains among the best three driver lineups on the grid, along with Hamilton and Russell at Mercedes, who are already locked down for 2025, and Norris Piastri at McLaren. Sainz has been linked with the Andreas Seidel James Key project at Sauber slash Audi, a sort of 2019 McLaren reunion gig. It's a viable option, but given Audi is scaling up for a works assault in 2026, it's more likely Sainz will use that interest as a bargaining chip during a fresh round of negotiations with Ferrari. Further complicating the next rounds of contract talks all over the grid is the fact that it makes sense for drivers to have maximum flexibility ahead of the next major regulation change to allow themselves the best chance of backing the right horse for 2026 and beyond. Audi's arrival and Honda's impending return also widens the pool of ambitious manufacturer-backed projects for top drivers to align themselves with, which opens up the driver market further. Red Bull are likely to be as effective as ever, but will the brand new Ford-supported engine department deliver the goods, or will power units again become the major weakness that holds an otherwise brilliant team back? Ferrari and Mercedes will see this as a big opportunity to get back to the front. By linking up with Honda, Aston Martin will expect to take a huge leap forward as well. At that point, as indicated by Martin Whitmarsh, Tsunoda comes firmly onto that team's radar. Would that be as teammates to the current team owner's son, or alongside a then 44-year-old Fernando Alonso? Rumours persist that Lance Stroll may not continue beyond the end of 2024, and if Alonso, who is understood to have an option with the team for 2025, comes onto the market for 26, will he still be a major player for rival teams to consider despite his advancing years? If he wants to race on, Alonso will almost certainly be a major consideration in what right now looks to be a wide-open driver market, one that could be blown completely open if Verstappen prematurely decides enough is enough. 
Whatever happens, Red Bull faces some big decisions over the next year or so.